All right, hey, welcome back to another episode of the Good Advice Podcast. You're tuning in to the best resource for business owners, entrepreneurs, startup founders, and managers. We talk about all sorts of different things that are related to running and scaling a business on the podcast. I'm your host, Blake Benz, and I'm excited about today's episode. It's an interesting one. It is, you know, if you clicked on this podcast episode, um, you may, especially if you clicked on this like down the road, you might be wondering like, what the heck is this episode about? Uh, This episode, it's not uncommon that what we talk about on the show is coming out of people that I'm talking to on a week-to-week basis, uh, customers that I'm talking to, uh, conversations that are happening on social media. Uh, This particular conversation came out of our growth group meetup on Tuesday mornings. It's open to the public, open to all business owners. We get together on Tuesday mornings and we talk shop, we talk business. So are we doomed? Are we, maybe another way to put it, are we screwed when it comes to running a success Successful business in today's economy. We're going to be talking all about it on the episode today. But first, before we dive in, we always have a quick ad from one of the amazing businesses that like to sponsor the podcast. As you're thinking about your marketing goals for next year, you might think about the podcast as one opportunity to share more about your brand. And hey, if you're enjoying the podcast, if you're loving the podcast, thank you so much for following us, subscribing to us, maybe even leaving us a review on the podcast, either on the podcast platform or or online at Good Advice here in Northwest Arkansas. Whatever the case may be, we appreciate it, and we'll be right back soon. There's one single piece of advice that I give to business owners who are ready to scale their business drastically, and that's knowing exactly what you need to hand off so that you can continue focusing on what you're an expert in. It amazes me when I talk to business owners who are doing their own bookkeeping and tax prep And worse, that they're going through all this paperwork at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, even midnight, slaving away trying to make sense of all of the numbers for their business. Business owners who are making it happen have already figured out that you can't do it all yourself. That's why I recommend Steve Lay with Equity Business Solutions. Not only is he an expert in bookkeeping and tax prep, but what I love about Steve is that he'll sit down with you and help you make sense of the value of your business beyond just reading a spreadsheet. You'll be able to make better decisions, and more importantly, you're going to save yourself the crucial time you would have spent going through QuickBooks or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever it is that keeps us up late at night. So save yourself some time and some money by giving Steve Lay a call at Equity Business Solutions, and he'll show you the value beyond your numbers. Go to equitybusinesssolutionsllc.com to find out more. So this isn't a question that I've gotten for the first time. In fact, probably since COVID, I can think of specific instances where I've sat down with someone who has asked me about... Um, the state of entrepreneurship in Northwest Arkansas, our small business owners feeling, uh, people who follow the podcast, they know I bring on small business owners on the podcast. So it's not uncommon for people to, I'll be getting coffee with someone and they might say, um, Hey, how are small business owners doing today? How is sort of like the startup ecosystem doing? Like how are, how are people doing? What's the general feel? And this, like I mentioned, this is something that's come up, uh, quite a few times since COVID, uh, and understandably so. In fact, um, we talked a little bit about this, by the way, probably maybe five or six episodes ago, and I want to revisit it. I want to revisit it because it's, it's interesting how easy it is to get swept away in business. It's interesting how easy it is for your mentality in business to be dictated by other people around you, whether that is mainstream news, friends and family, um, you know, something happens in your day to day and it affects kind of how you see things long term. But I want to talk about sort of like really what your approach to business should be when things are challenging, excuse me, when things are challenging, when things are tough and kind of just getting things out there. So 
I was at my growth group on Tuesday morning and a gentleman was there attending and he runs a business. He basically a business broker helps people buy and sell businesses. And he asked to the group, we had about 10 people there. He said, Hey, what's, what's everybody's feel about the business world right now? Um, and the question was something along the lines of, uh, Hey, I'm hearing a lot of negativity. I'm hearing a lot of cynicism, um, is that matching what you're experiencing? What all do you think? Now, it is no surprise why someone might feel this way. If you're listening to this episode around the time that it's published, you know, we're in the middle of an economy where um, it is marked by inflation. Uh, frankly, things have not been uh, the sentiment around the economy has not been good since COVID. And there have been a variety of different highs and probably much more lows that have made it into the mainstream news since then. Uh, for example, there was a headline uh, about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, about how people were stealing chickens all over the country. Why were they stealing chickens? Because the price of eggs had become um, insane to the point where it was apparently cheaper to uh, have your own chickens and produce your own eggs than it was to go to the store and buy eggs. And I don't have this story in front of me, so I can't tell you uh, what the percent growth was, uh, but it was something it's something in, insane, you know, pure insanity on how the price of eggs have changed just in the last couple of years. So you see this headline, uh, you see a variety of different things. Um, I saw a headline about how, uh, the number of business closures have uh, skyrocketed this year. There's been a number of businesses that have closed. Uh, and there's also, by the way, let's be real. We're talking about a, a, an opportunity. When we talk about entrepreneurship, it's not fair to call it a hobby. Um, we're talking about a career pathway that is from the get-go, just totally agnostic to the economy, we're talking about a career path that already is marked by not great odds. Most business owners won't make it to year five. If we're talking about podcasting, it's it's a sliver of people will even make it to their 10th episode. Uh, far fewer will absolutely get anywhere close to 50, 60, 70, 100 episodes. So, the, the, the game is sort of stacked against you from the get-go, and when you add these other things that pop up, it can really create a bleak environment, a bleak perspective for you when you think about running your business. Why do I bring this up? I bring this up because, honestly, running a business is really freaking difficult. It's difficult because of two reasons. It is a moving target. You have a vague idea of what you think you want to sell and who is going to buy it, and yet it's not a clear pathway. It's not a straight line from idea to running a successful business. There are many turns and winding roads and gathering feedback from your customers and iterating your product. Uh, there's there's several steps of ideating and innovating and figuring this thing out. And okay, okay, I, I see now why that product failed. It it made sense from the get go, but now in hindsight, I'm realizing that the price point was off, or I was marketing it to the wrong person, or I I thought this group was my customer. Now I'm realizing after the fact that it's actually this customer. Like the these are things that people are navigating as business owners on a on a day, I was going to say a week to week, but really it's day to day, day to day. You are navigating these thoughts. Uh, and, and, and by the way, if you're not in entrepreneurship, if you listen to the podcast, because you know, you're a entrepreneur, uh, which I, I don't mean any disrespect to that term, but you, you envision one day, maybe being an entrepreneur, like you want to do it one day, uh, understand that the story you've heard on social media is not the actual story. The story that you hear about the person who quits their job and they start the business and they are um, a business prodigy and it just worked, it just clicked. I have yet to find that story. 
I've yet I've, now I've seen that story told a bunch, but digging deeper, I've yet to see it actually be true. Perfect example. I had a friend of mine, um, excuse me. I had a friend of mine who he, he told a story like this and became a very successful marketer. The detail he left out was the 10 years of slaving away to grow his marketing business and working other jobs, like being a, a, like selling, um, cable to people, like, you know, walk people walking by, like trying to sell cable to people and being a door to door sales, salesperson, excuse me. Like that story doesn't get told. What gets told is the multi-million dollar marketing company story. So just understand, you know, when we talk about this kind of stuff, we're not talking about, um, you know, this sort of like this, this straight line to success, excuse me. Excuse me. I have a little bit of a cold, so I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying not to be too distracting as I, I tell these stories, but all this to say, it's a messy road. It's a challenging road. And the other part of this too, it's, it's a very lonely road. It's a very lonely road. You report to ultimately yourself. You look in the mirror, you think about, am I accomplishing the things that I want to accomplish? And all of your affirmations and criticisms come entirely from you and you alone, not from anybody else. Now, there are some other unique situations where people go into business together. Maybe you have a co-founder, maybe you have a small team. And it's a little bit different in those cases. But, but more often than not, even if you're managing people, it's, it is still lonely at the top. I was meeting with the business owner yesterday, <clears throat> and we were just relating with each other. Talking about, yeah, it's a burden to bear. It is painful being isolated at the top. And it's not intentional. It's just that it's hard to talk to other people about the journey of entrepreneurship when they simply do not understand the journey itself. Uh, and you have people who everyone has the story, I feel like, of like the condescending friend who doesn't mean to be condescending is like, you still doing that thing? You still trying that thing? I saw a post from uh, this guy. Uh, who, um, uh, he, I, he, I, I just found out about this person's business, but they sell, um, uh, drink products, uh, in Walmart stores. And he said, when he was first starting his business, people were like, Hey, are you still doing that? Like Yeti knockoff thing? And he's like, yeah, I can just imagine this guy being like, yeah, you know, it's a real business, but you know, thanks for that. <laughs> I mean, you just get comments like that constantly, not to mention that we ourselves are frankly, naturally inclined to be harder on ourselves than be optimistic. When you look in the mirror, for example, you don't typically, it's not, um, what was the guy's name, by the way, the, was it Stuart Smalley? Is that it? I can't remember the, the old, uh, character. I think it started in SNL and then it became like a, its own thing, but you know, the guy who'd look in the mirror and say, um, and I'm going to butcher it. Cause now, now that I'm telling the story, I don't have top of mind, but you know, it's like, I'm smart. Um, and there's something else. And it's like, and got, you know, and doggone it. People like me, like we, we don't naturally do that. And in fact, I mean, that's just, that just serves the case in point of the story is that here's this person sort of forcing themselves to do it because it, it does not come naturally. So pair all of that with the absolute hurricane that comes with running a business. Uh, I'll also tell you, despite what, uh, now people who are running a business, you probably already know this, but people listening, maybe you, you haven't jumped into entrepreneurship yet. Um, I'll go ahead and share with you that most people who start a business do not actually know much about business. Uh, that is just a common thing to be true. So when people start a business, they don't, they don't know what it might look like to invoice someone. They don't even know what books are. <laughs> like, what are my books? Like, I need to go to the library. Like, what is this? They don't know. Um, uh, they may not have any idea what a business plan is or what it's supposed to be. Uh, they may not know oh, I'm supposed to get registered. I, oh, I couldn't just like say, this is my business now. Like it's not incompetence or naivety. You, you have to understand that most people, when they start a business, they're thinking the product or service or the solution to the pain point. And 
for successful business owners, that's what's forefront of mind. And all these other things just come along with the process. It's like, and you, and you figure this out as you work with other business owners. It's like, I met a guy who was doing all of his appointments manually. And I was like, dude, why aren't you using Calendly? And he was like, what, what is Calendly? And I was like, well, I mean, you don't have to use Calendly, but it's just an online tool that lets, you know, you can sync it with your calendar and people can book appointments and it's just automated. And he was like, you, you automate it. Like you don't do everything by hand. And I was like, no, I would, I would, I would have burned out many times. And, and, and I, I've had that conversation with people also where I, I'll mention something and someone who's much savvier than I am in business or much more experienced, they say, well, uh, wait, really you do that? Like, why don't you do it this way? And then I'm like having my own, uh, this incredible insight of like, yeah, why am I not doing it that way? So most of us are figuring out the business side of things as we go along uh, and frankly, trying to do things as honestly, ethically, um, appropriately as we can while serving our customers well. So running a business is already very hard. Pair that then with extreme negative news, extreme negative news that I'll be honest, here's what I've learned probably as of maybe two or three years ago, I have learned that our news culture is out of control. Uh, I, I knew as a kid, I remember being like in a youth group or something and like the pastor or whoever would say, it would say something like, you know, ah, the news is so negative and you know, it'd be, I can't remember even where the story would be going, but so I always knew this to be true, but I have really from like now putting my marketing and like business lens on negative news sells extremely well. It creates incredible engagement. It creates incredible engagement. Like you have to understand the dollar value of engagement. And if someone's not directly selling you something, then having you engaged actively and regularly, excuse me, excuse me, Having you engaged actively and regularly is literally the next best thing. Um, it, it, and that's that's a whole nother conversation, by the way, that I don't really want to get into. But point being, there is an out of control negative news cycle. And here's here's what I, I had like a, a moment of self-awareness where I realized, holy cow, I'm I'm in this. I am wrapped in this. Um, I am, it's almost like being in the matrix and then seeing the matrix and realizing like, oh, I'm out of it now. Like I, I get it now. Part of this, by the way, is thanks to my, my beautiful, amazing wife who, um, I guess it was about four years ago, decided to get off social media entirely. And every now and then I tell her a story about something on social media and she typically responds with like, oh my gosh, I am so glad I'm not on that anymore. Like, think about this. Can you imagine not having social media? Can you imagine not getting on it or scrolling or what? She doesn't have any of that stuff. Pretty admirable quality, by the way. So I was already like getting a bit unplugged thanks to her. But um, there was a point in the news cycle around COVID, I think, where I was so um, desperate. It's not the right word. Um, I, I was just so lost. Honestly, I was getting pelleted with so many negative news, the state of the business. I had a really close family friend who reached out to me. I did not ask them for advice. They reached out to me and on their own volition said, um, or actually we were already talking about something else and they just brought up like, Hey, I want to mention, you know, about your business. I think you need to shut down your business. And I was like, uh, wow. Okay. Why? And they were like, you know, the economy's in shambles. This was like three years ago. So I, I, who knows what they would say today? Probably a much worse, right? But they're like, the economy's in shambles. People are not going to be buying what you're selling. They're only going to be buying the bare minimum essentials. Um, you need to quit now. And like that just needs to happen ASAP. And I was like, okay, well, thank you for sharing that with me. I appreciate you sharing, I guess. <laughs> well, I... I I was getting these kinds of comments. I was getting people even who were checking, Hey, are you doing okay? Are things going okay? 
Um, and I, I was doing okay. I was doing well enough to keep the lights on, I guess, to keep the doors open, so to speak, to keep the business going. But all that to say, I had this moment of insight where, and I, I, I'm just, I'm going to do such a bad job explaining this because I can't fully conceptualize like the exact moment, but there was a moment I was scrolling on social media and I saw a headline that was, it's a headline we've all seen 10 million times. It was this NASA scientist report that this asteroid uh, could destroy earth by 2026 or something like that. I don't remember what it was, but we've all seen that headline, right? Where it's like the asteroid's going to hit, you know, like, you know what I'm talking about? Or like, uh, solar flares from the sun proved to be, could be catastrophic to our infrastructure. Here's what you need to know. And it had two moments of realization. First of all, I shamelessly clicked on it. <laughs> And I was reading the comments on it and someone commented who like actually was like a, a, an astr uh, astronomer. Is that the right word? I mean, they were a scientist much smarter than I am. And they're like, Hey, this is like such an overblown, like this is like a one in like 100 billion odds of happening. Like, yes, it could happen, but please just continue on your day to day. Like you've nothing to worry about. So I saw that comment and I thought to myself, okay, yeah. Why did I get why did I get so um, invested in this story for something that was nonsensical? And the second moment of insight I had in that same time was, why do I keep reading the story? Why do I keep reading the story about the earth literally blowing up? And frankly, why do I feel anxiety around something that's, that's entirely out of my control? It's entirely out of my control. There is literally, if, if there's an asteroid coming to earth, you can know we're all done. Like there is literally nothing you can do. Literally nothing you can do. Okay. You're not going somewhere else. There's nothing you can do. Despite whatever mainstream movie you've seen where, you know, there's a bunker somewhere. There's no bunker. You're out, you're out of luck. And if there's, if there is a bunker, you're not getting invited to it. I'm not getting invited to it. Like we're done. Right. But I had this moment of insight of like, why do I keep seeing this headline? Like, why does this keep popping up? And I, it was like this moment of seeing the matrix of being like, oh, this headline pops up because it's incredible for engagement. And this began to sort of like, I can't think of the expression, roll the ball in my mind. That's not right. Turn the wheel. Uh, gears were turning regardless where I realized, okay, hang on now. There's a lot of negative news out there, and I am finding myself stuck in a cycle of allowing the news to guide how I feel about my day. Now, for some of you listening, you may already be like exempt from this. Like you, you, you freed yourself, so to speak, and you're probably thinking, like, I mean, yeah, no brainer, right? And again, like logically, I grew up knowing this. Yet I found myself in this cycle of being, being in it, being part of it. So I, I, and I had a friend of mine actually around the same time who they had come to me and said, Hey, I want to do like this study. It's about like, how do we, in, it, how do we internalize, uh, the news and how do we just, just this random thing. And I, I remember telling them, I said, Hey, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do that actually. Uh, in fact, I'm going to withdraw from the news entirely, which, you know, then I had other friends and it's so funny. You can't make any decision, by the way. I was just having, uh, I had some friends over this last weekend. And one of the things we were talking about is there is no gray areas anymore and there's no complications or nuance anymore. Social media has created this situation where everybody needs to have a black or white take. You're either right or you're wrong. And there's no room for nuance. There's no room for complexity, which I think is pretty, pretty insane. So I was explaining, I said, you know, mentioning that I wasn't reading the news, that I was purposely staying out of it, then got other people who were like, well, you got to be engaged, but well, you got to be. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I get it. Thank you. I know. Okay. But on the same token for my mental health, it was like, I, I have to withdraw. I have to not be part of this cycle any longer. So that brings me to today. I was in this meeting Tuesday morning. This gentleman asked this question, Hey, I'm, I'm hearing a lot. I'm, I'm getting a vibe check of some, some real cynicism and negativity. How's everybody feeling? And I'm reading the room and some people are feeling the same way. 
But regardless, this isn't the first time I've been asked this question in like the recent three or four months. This question has come up again. Uh, and I think in the past, it's even come up as directly as like, Blake, what should I do? What should I do for my business? What should my approach be? Now, I don't want to, I don't want to mislead anyone. I don't want to communicate that there is not a shred of truth to any of the news stories that you've read. I don't want to communicate you to you that you need to be blissfully ignorant and unconscious to the state of today's economy. I think that'd be bad advice. However, I think you would be doing a disservice to yourself if these things prove to be your direction for how you run your business. My approach over the last several months has been I'm going all in on focusing on my customers, listening to my customers, getting their feedback. Uh, I had a customer recently who ended a contract with me and which I never, um, I mean, how can you not, I don't say, I don't say you can't take it personal. It's not, it's not personal, but it's not, it's something that I always t- put, I put like an earnest set of eyes on. Hey, I want to know. What was it that made you want to move on? Was it a timing thing? Was it a money thing? Did I, did I not serve you the way that you wanted me to? Uh, and I ask people the, these, these questions directly. Anytime a contract ends where it seems like it, it could have had more runway there. And I ask directly, I say, Hey, tell me what's going on. What do you think? Are you unhappy? Uh, and I, sometimes I have to like really kind of what I've noticed is that people will typically say, Oh no, everything's great. You're great. You're great. And it's like, okay, but okay, but let's, but really though, tell me, tell me for real. Right. (laughs) So I I really have gone all in on customer feedback. Don't tell me what, don't tell me what I want to hear. I want to know about the product I'm offering, whether that's related to podcasting, SEO, content, marketing, uh, coaching and consulting. I, I, I want to know, is this what you thought it was? And did we accomplish what you wanted us to accomplish? And if the answer is no, it is time then for me to iterate and innovate on my product or service to make it more compelling, compelling, not meaning it's a snazzier advertising campaign or better marketing terms, compelling in that the value is more clearly there. So I decided to go all in on my customers. I say this, which it's kind of funny to say this because in hindsight, it's like, well, yeah, who else would you listen to? And you would be surprised. Maybe you wouldn't be surprised. Maybe you're living this right now as to how often people give feedback and comments and ideas. And I had um, Elizabeth Pranger on the podcast uh, a few months ago, and she talked about how she's a, a startup founder. And she was talking about how, you know, you get, you get, you get advice from everybody. People you didn't even ask for, you get advice from everybody. And part of the challenge of entrepreneurship is knowing whose advice do you really take? And it's, it's really not that clear. It's not advice. Like, should you steal from your customer or not? It's like, Hey, you should be working on this. Hey, you should be doing that. Hey, here's the latest trend. You, sh- you got to get on this. And then someone else is like, Hey, here's this other trend. And like these two trends totally contradict each other, but both people are highly successful business owners. And so like you're, you're navigating both of those things, uh, not to mention just like the pure, um, energy of just running a business, delivering the services you've sold, continuing to sell, you know, connecting with people actively, all of those things must continue to happen. And point being, um, you are going to get feedback from so many different people. And my advice when things are really hard, when the economy is really hard, is to not to understand that some things may be true, but to not let the narrative guide the direction for your business, where now you're operating out of fear, you're operating out of the uncertainty of what could happen, and you become desperate in your business. Because here's what I've learned. This runaway news cycle is not always accurate to what you can experience in your business. I'll give you two examples. I had somebody, uh, I was talking about advertising on the podcast. We've done mildly well advertising on the podcast. We rolled it out this year. 
list. We've sold, um, I think at this point, maybe around $25,000, uh, in advertising on the podcast. You know, it's, it's a, it's a small thing that I'm committed to growing in 2024, but something I'm very proud of. I'm proud of, of how it started and where it's gone. Well, a friend of a friend, or actually just a friend, um, a few months ago said something along the lines of, yeah, it's, it's, no one's buying advertising right now. Like that, that you must be really hard for you. And it struck me as so weird because I had literally that week I had sold something like $5,000. Like it was probably, it's probably one of my biggest, um, podcast related sales in terms of the, uh, the, the type of product I sell, it was definitely like the most expensive version that I had sold. And I just kind of laughed to myself. I thought, here's someone who's directed by the news cycle and the uncertainty and the doubt. And I chose not to listen to that. And, and because of that, because I was honed in on my customers, I continued and have continued to sell really well for the podcast. In fact, when you think about that 25 grand, most of that has come in Q4. Most of that has come in quarter four for my business. Uh, more recently, I was talking to someone and this, this actually is kind of true. I wouldn't, I don't want to say it's not true. It is true, but everybody knows that December is a tough time to sell. It's holiday season. People aren't ever buying. They want to push it to next year. Yada, yada, yada. Well, I, I, there's so many headlines about this, about December being hard for business owners. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna put my head down and I'm just going to keep selling. Well, it, it turns out that this month and last month, November and December, uh, which this podcast episode's in December, if you haven't picked up on that yet. December and November are, I'm pretty sure, I was just looking at it earlier today, and I, I think this is true. Um, I think they're going to be the two most profitable months uh, in the history of good advice. In the last five years, the most profitable months. And that is because, frankly, I've treated things as business as usual. And this might be this might be the greater insight is... More often than not, with the news cycle, there's very little you can control. If an asteroid is going to hit Earth, there's nothing you can do about it. If the price of eggs is crazy expensive, there is nothing you are going to be able to do today or tomorrow or next week that will affect that price. What you can control are your conversations with your customers, your touch points, it is, by the way, why it's so important to be building a brand that your customers can become true fans of. I'm not talking about they, you know, they drink the Kool-Aid and it's a cult and it's weird. I'm talking about doing business so well and treating people so well. And in your mindset, seeing every customer as incredibly valuable that when the belt gets squeezed, here are people who continue to buy from you no matter what. And I think I'll end with this. You know, I, I had a conversation. One of the things that came up a lot during COVID were conversations on business owners who would call me and they'd say, hey, uh, or I get an email or what have you. And it'd be like, hey, we're having a really hard time with our employees. Uh, and by the way, this the COVID is what spurred on after this, the great resignation, quietly quitting. These are other headlines that maybe you've heard of before. But... um. I had business owners talking to me and asking like, Hey, I need, I need to create culture. I need to create some culture. I need to, I need to show my team that they're valued. Uh, we're, we're having a hard time with retention with people quitting. It's it, we're, we're kind of panicked. And I found myself in this weird dialogue where I was like, Hey, at this point, your options are so much more limited than what they would have been a year ago or two years ago. You know, culture isn't something you invest in when things are desperate. Culture is something you commit yourself to and you benefit from that during the high times, but also when things are pretty difficult and pretty, pretty, there's some drastic changes happening. You can lean on that culture. It's like a bank. You can lean on that and withdraw from that to keep trust high, to keep people engaged and for people to stay involved in what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Your brand is the exact same thing. You don't, you don't suddenly build a brand during 
you know, a, a inflating economy, things are, are really desperate for certain people. You don't, you don't then decide, Oh, I need a brand. It, 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 this is something you invest in six months ago, a year ago, two years ago. And then now when things are hard, you, you have the ability to continue to leverage that to keep your business afloat. That's all it is. And, and frankly, you don't need a business plan for that or some like genius strategy. Like, dude, it's, it's literally just taking care of people. It's literally just taking care of people, just doing right by people, just trying to take care of people well. And then your brand will be about that. And all the rest will come after that. Now, I realize this doesn't really help some of you who maybe you've never thought about brand and like you're in the middle of it now. And it's like, okay, well, what do I do? You know, I'd say even in that case, even if you don't have a brand, you can leverage, uh, it is still all the more important to really, I mean, you may be in a desperate time where you have one customer. Uh, if it was me, I would be putting everything I am into making sure that one customer gets the VIP treatment. Like that, that one person would know how commit it's like, uh, it's Jerry Maguire, right? Where he has Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh, Tom Cruise has Cuba Gooding Jr. as his only client. And he realizes like, I need it. This is my golden goose. I got to go all in. Now, let me, let me frame that then correctly. I mean, if you have a, if you have one customer and they're a nightmare, you know, they pay you 50 bucks a month and they're asking you, they're calling you all hours of the day. Like, let's have, let's have some context appropriately here, but you know, it's never, your business is never too small to take care of people well and truly wow your customers. I think wowing sometimes we think has to be like this big song and song and dance. In my mind, wowing is just treating your customers well. And frankly, shocker of a thought, doing what you promised you would doing what you said you would will go a long way with your customers. This is all, th these are all things you can control. You have a direct influence on these things. So bear that in mind. Whenever the news cycle is getting crazy, things are getting wild, focus on what you can control. And what people are talking about may not be what's actually true. Like I mentioned, the two most profitable months in the history of the podcast, or the podcast of the business, um, having sold a lot of advertising dollars on the podcast, uh, all when other people were saying, it's not going to happen. It's, it's not going to work. Um, you might be surprised. So all that's to say, that's today's episode on the Good Advice Podcast. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode and you're not following the podcast, go and click the follow button so that I can keep, I guess, bothering you on your phone or wherever you listen to the podcast. Um, and then keep in mind, we do have our top 10 countdown happening right now. The top 10 most downloaded episodes on the podcast. Uh, you can check that out coming every week, counting down the end of 2023. All that to say, whether you're listening live or the episode just came out and you're tuning in, or maybe you're tuning into this episode, you know, months or years down the road, I wish you well. I hope you're doing well. Continue to do good business and good things will happen. That's today's good advice. I'll see you soon. Bye.